On today's wrestling news, WWE had plans for Triple H to wrestle at WrestleMania. A backstage update on Cody and WWE. Uh, we've got a mystery opponent announced for Owen Hart Memorial Tournament and AEW. And some massive matches have been made official for WrestleMania SmackDown. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? Yes, my name is Phil Chambers and I'm joined by Gareth Morgan to talk all things wrestling news. But before we get into it, make sure you like the video, comment down below what you think of all of today's stories, uh, subscribe to the channel, and link sweet stories in the description to click it and off you go. But first up, obviously the biggest news of the day uh, is Triple H and his interview with uh, Stephen A. Smith on ESPN's first take. Um, we we put about this a little bit uh, yesterday when the first sort of clip of it broke uh, and announcing his retirement, talking about his um, health issues and things like that. But the full interview has been out there now. So there's a lot more information on it. And I highly suggest you go and watch it. It's a it's a hard-hitting one. It's very emotional. He goes in-depth about what's happened to him. Um, but it is a very interesting and well worth a watch. But a little nugget of uh, information that came out through this was that WWE had some plans for him to actually wrestle at this year's WrestleMania, obviously before uh, his sort of cardiac event stuff um, started to happen. Um, so he was talking about how he was actually kind of uh, kind of comfortable with being done with in-ring wrestling, but like if the right thing came along and they wanted him to do it, like he, he would have done, he would have like uh, gone and gone and done that. But he got a little quote just saying that uh, I had a conversation with Vince McMahon about doing something at WrestleMania this year in Dallas. We talked about it, and there were plans for it. Uh, obviously, this uh, when this all happened, it shut all that down. But yeah, they were actually he was still planning on wrestling at WrestleMania 38 until that was obviously taken away from him. Uh, that the whole thing is a really, really uh, emotional interview. It goes really in depth about what happened to him. Obviously, talking about how he was experiencing the heart failure, coughing up blood, going into um, surgeries, sort of not knowing if he was going to wake up from them, um, and thinking about his daughters and his wife and his family uh, and everything that surrounds that, and how this obviously puts everything into perspective. And there's things that are a lot more important than wrestling uh, and it's real life things um, that you've got to think about and it puts it all into perspective and you've got to be there for your family and get through this kind of thing. Um, so there's more important things in life and the wrestling side of things is one of the things that had to go away, uh, unfortunately. Um, but he's still kind of coming back into his executive role within WWE, just kind of, kind of getting back into it now. Um, so I we'll have to wait and see what happens with all of that. But it's a terrifying story there from Triple H and his interview. Yeah, it's really sobering. If you've not gone and watched the full, I think it's like a 20 minute video uh, on YouTube yeah. of the first eight thing. It's it is. It's just you see the man really behind this larger than life character that we've come to know for so long, even outside of the ring to a certain degree. Like he's just got this aura around him. But you can see it's just it's understandably shook him. And yeah. there was no real news on what those plans officially would have been at Mania, like who we would have been wrestling, but it's really quite insignificant in the grand scheme of things because it's more this this person was, well, face to face with a very grim reality and he's come out the other side of it, but it's a slow process now to just to try and get himself back on his feet. You can see the passion is still there. Like he wants to, they, they were talking about wanting to find the next big thing, the next big star, talking about Gable Stevenson, all these, the, the future plans. He still very much feels like he's an integral part of the WWE landscape and wants to just help it going forward. But there's no desire there and there's i think he's got a pacemaker fitted now so there's not a chance that he's going to be getting in the ring doing anything like that it's not going to be one of yeah, those things a, where there's a defibrillator so it's like that's the one. constantly attached to him so it's like oh no that's that's terrifying yeah. That's you a pacemaker, that. yeah. The, 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 yeah, the defibrillator. Yeah, defibrillator. He's a, yeah, so all the rest of it. So it's just going to be... It's not one of those things where in a couple of years' time he'll just come back and go, oh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's going to be serious <laughs> monitoring. It. And he, he yeah. needs to have that time just to reintegrate himself back into the system and just yeah. all the best to him. You see, you just see from the out, the outpouring of support on social I media for say him. that, yeah. It's, it's um, everyone, like wrestlers, fans, it's, there's so much support. Yeah, it's like the impact he's had on the business is far bigger than just his in-ring work. Hmm. Um, like, obviously, he's had some incredible moments within the wrestling industry, uh, some great matches. One of my, my well, my all-time favorite match is him versus Cactus Jack at the Royal Rumble 2000. Um, so he's had such a big impact on the industry as a whole through that. But then you look at how NXT came about and how that happened uh, and his vision for what that would be and the amount of stars that have come up through that system mm -hmm. uh, since it started. And obviously um, people have 
loads of stories about him from backstage from the NXT days. Everyone's sharing the little pictures of uh, Triple H doing the doing the point thing that everyone always gets. Um, so yeah, a huge outpouring of support for him has mm. come out since this has happened. So it's all good to see. It is. Yeah, he was he was a part of the uh, the triple threat of the main event of the first show I ever watched that got me hooked into wrestling in the first place. That's WrestleMania 20. So always got a soft spot for the game. But a person who also was heavily influenced by Triple H throughout his career is one Cody Rhodes. He spoke about it a number of times. He said that he's that he's just got a lot to owe to Triple H, even though they have been warring, butting heads with AEW and NXT and all the rest of it. But we've got more news now. Now on the imminent, seemingly inevitable arrival of Cody Rhodes in WWE. I feel like every day we've got some new tidbits to add, but we've got another one today. So just sit back and take it in because WrestleVotes have been added again on Twitter. And they said that two very high profile people in WWE have been adamant that uh, Vince McMahon wants Rhodes to arrive in his full AEW presentation, ring gear, theme music, pyro, all the good stuff. They want him to look very much like he did in AEW because the quote is here, the visual impact of the American nightmare crossing the line is significant here. So it's looking like they really want to get the Cody Rhodes that we'd seen on AEW in WWE. So that could mean that we get the full... I was going to sing it away there, but we don't want to get the video taken off YouTube, my incredible rendition of his theme song, so we're not going to do that. But they're going to go for the full AEW works and I don't think we're going to get any Triple H golden shovel stuff. I think it's a bit too soon. (laughs) ain't going to get any of that stuff. I think it'll just be Cody coming down to the ring. Whether that's on Raw, the Raw before Mania, the, the WrestleMania Raw, which is it's being called, yay. Whether it's there or whether it's just one of those things like the Hardy Boys at WrestleMania 33 where they just arrive on the night and there's a huge bap. That could be the, that as well. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen there, but it's looking like Cody is going to be presented very much as an American nightmare. Yes, absolutely. I think this is the right choice as well, to mm. be honest with you. Like, if you want the impact of that AEW guy coming across, you can't just put him back as a, an old WWE package mm. or, or even something new like wouldn't work. Mm. You need that AEW Cody mm-hmm. coming across and that's the impact there. Um, and I think it'd be absolutely incredible. And mm-hmm. it's, yeah, like, I think I don't know if Cody owns his own music but he used it mm. on the indies, he used it in AEW, he used it in mm. WCPW most importantly. Um, uh, so if, they, if WWE get that as well, like that whole package is such a big part of Cody's presentation. Um, even if he did the thing where he like comes through the floor or they do something to the stage just as like a one-off or something for his return would be really funny uh just to amp that kind of thing of him coming through the middle in AEW that he always did um but i'm very much looking forward to this it's gonna be great whatever it is and a quick sidebar i did see cody defend the what culture television title in london i watched him do it against riddle so there you go that's just a little little thing good Mm -hmm. stuff Cody was great for us in WCPW. Mm. What a guy. Uh, but moving over now uh, to a bit of AEW news, and they announced the, um, the opening match of the Owen Hart Memorial mm. Tournament for the women, and it's going to be a women's qualifying match, and it's going to be the Bunny. It's on Dynamite, this, I should say. It's going to be the Bunny versus a mystery opponent. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and apparently this mystery opponent is not someone that is currently on the AEW roster. Tony Khan will sign them after the match. So it's going to be a brand new signing uh, in the women's division of AEW. Obviously, the finals mm. for this tournament is going to be at uh, Double or Nothing at the end of May, May 29th, I think it is. Um, so we've got quite a lot of this leading up to that. So we should get quite a lot of, like a couple of months of good TV out of this. Uh, but very interested to see who the mystery opponent is going to be. Yeah, and I think the word in there is that it's a sign in. It's not just going to be a one off appearance. Yeah. So, like, that's your, your people like Mickey James, maybe out of the equation there, because it seems like they're very much tied up with impact. I go yeah. personally, and you know, I don't know if she has signed with anywhere specifically yet. I've not had my, my ear directly to the floor with this, but I'd like to see Tony Storm pop up. I think that'd be really cool. Tony Storm that would and be AW. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I can beat that as in terms of an option. Yeah. Be pretty cool. Tony Storm, it is. This is if it's bit. not, we're going to be disappointed. Yeah, if it's not Storm, we riot. Not Ruby, riot. Never mind. That's <laughs> too soon. Yeah, but I forgot it was my story there, Phil. It's, it's been, it's been, it's been <laughs> I was long, wondering what you were doing. Long Saturday. I was for it. I was like, long Saturday. It's you next, Gareth. Come on, here we go. Let me tell you, I forgot about this story because it's going to be a very forgettable smackdown. There it is. No, it could there be it cool. Is. It could be cool. But it, we're going to have... Ah, they're doing, they're doing it again. They did it last year. We had this WrestleMania SmackDown thing, and I think it had Rey Mysterio and Dominic defending the SmackDown titles against like Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode, or maybe going for the belts. It was one of those things. They, they, they put yeah, one of the matches. 
Yeah, and they, should, they put one of the matches that should have been on the Mania card on this yeah. Mania SmackDown. It was back when all we wanted from Rey and Dominic Mysterio was for them to win the titles at WrestleMania and yeah. hug and it just be nice. That's yeah. all we wanted from that at that time. Couldn't don't, even have it. Don't get nice things, <laughs> do we, Phil? But again, we're not getting nice things again this year because they're putting the Andre the Giant ma- battle memorial thing. That's going on SmackDown again. I'm not even going to get crazy with this name. Yeah, I'm not even going to give it its proper name. It doesn't deserve it because they just they don't care about it. So I don't know. I'm just I'm fed up. And making it even worse, they put Finn Balor in it. Finn Balor and Damian Priest have been going at it on Raw week after week <clears> after week, and a lot of people have been saying, "Oh, it's probably going to lead to a WrestleMania match minimum for the US title because they need to fill out two nights." Let's not forget. And maybe, maybe because they're both in this battle royale, it could lead to a match at Mania. You never know. Could do that. But at this point, it's not looking like it will. But the other people involved in the match are Apollo Crews, Commander Aziz, Eric Ivar, Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander, Akira Tozawa, Drew Gulak, Reggie, Jinder Mahal, Shanky, R-Truth, Mansoor, Mad Cat Moss, and Robert Roode. So yeah, quite a field. And um, yeah. <laughs> after this as well, we're going to have an IC title triple threat because they're also not putting Ricochet on the WrestleMania card at this moment in time. So, yay. He's going to be fighting against uh, Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garza because they had a little angle on SmackDown, just thrown together. Uh, he, he lost to them both via nefarious tactics. So, Slick Rick got backstage and went, I'm going to put my title on the line against him because that's, that's a response to being foiled twice. Not a clue. Yeah, not a clue with all this. It, I, when it popped up, I just my head dropped. I was like, "Oh, we're doing it yeah. again. We're doing it again." I think you we? said it. Did you say it a couple of weeks ago? Like, just put an IC title ladder match on the card again. Like, it's super easy. You get like eight people in it. It's always fun. Twenty minutes. Ricochet wins. Fine. All good. Just mm. do that. Get people on the Mania card. I don't mm. understand this. Um, like a title. And like this Andre the Giant thing that you've built up over ages and now completely given up on it seems uh, both moving over. I don't, yeah, I don't understand. Why, I think the writing. Why, why the is it right- every title on WrestleMania? It, yeah, ugh. it's a minimum. But I think the writing was on the wall for the for the battle royale when almost announced that he was going to have a singles match. I was like, ah, if they're not yeah, going to give him true. the big one, it's probably not <laughs> yeah, going to be a big thing. All assumed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But <laughs> WrestleMania SmackDown, it's so exciting. Yeah, obviously. But moving over to today's Twitter questions, the first one is kind of based on what we were just talking about, but mm. Mark Solid uh, says, Morning Legends, with Money in the Bank having its own pay-per-view and not at Mania, what's your thoughts on starting a Scott Hall stroke, uh, stroke Razor Ramon uh, Memorial IC ladder match with qualifying matches leading up to the show? Uh, and then he's got a picture of his dog driving a car. Which of, is of course, of course. <laughs> then what a double whammy that is. Um, I like, for, for a number of reasons, I love that idea because I love anything. Yeah. If, if it's a respectful like, tribute to, to a, a legendary wrestler, that's awesome in its own right. But then on top of that, I love anything you've got to qualify for. I, I just, I'm yeah. simple. I'm a simple minded guy. Like, if it's something you just have to jump through a hurdle to get to, it makes it feel more significant, makes it feel special. Yeah. So, yeah. It's really easy idea. TV to write as well. It really is. <laughs> AW like, do it all the time. Matches. And it's great. Like, all these eliminators, and the, they've seen now with the Owen Hart tournament thing. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Whether they do it or not, uh, that's a different thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. 100%. I would love this. I think the sort of ladder match on WrestleMania is a spot that's it's it always misses. Like they like getting loads of people onto WrestleMania obviously. Um so if it was like a big multi man thing that gets loads of people onto the card, the sort of qualifying matches in the run up, like you say, really easy T V mm-hmm. to write. It mm-hmm. has stakes. It, there's like intrigue. You can build stories within the sort of tournament structure that go into it or whatever. Um and I think it's good. And it's and it um memorializes a great wrestler at the same time. And more than anything this idea, they should absolutely do this. More than anything, Phil, think of all the Scott Hall Razor Ramon tribute gears. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we love. It'd be great. Yeah. It'd be great. Um, so the next question comes from Eddie Zamory, who just says, what is your favorite Triple H moment of his career? Ooh, see, I'm not going to paint him in the best of light in terms of like triumphant Triple H moments, because I feel like Triple okay. H was always at his best when he was being the obstacle to be overcome. That makes sense. Best. Which is still a hell of a job to do. And for me, it was the Batista thing. I love that storyline. We've seen like a, a different variation of it, let's say now in the Wardlow MGF stuff that's been going down. I adored that. I think I was in year five at primary school and it was, it gripped me. I'd, I'd rush home on a Tuesday night 
like Tuesday afternoon after obviously Raw had happened on the Monday and I'd just sit there for three, like two hours it was at that point and I'd just be immersed in this storyline. It was just, it was great. Triple H played an incredible part in it and it, it catapulted Batista up to the next level as well. So that's my Triple H moments probably because it was his whole program. Yeah. Excellent. Fair enough. I uh, talk about this at every possible opportunity, but um, the, it goes back to that Royal Rumble match uh, mm-hmm. against Cactus Jack at Madison Square Garden, Royal Rumble 2000. Uh, but it's the lead up to that, which is like mm-hmm. my favorite story like ever in uh, the history of wrestling. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, I like this because it, it's gone from Triple H putting someone over to Triple H being put over as the man by, uh, by uh, Mick Foley. And it's just that moment where he's, uh, he says Mankind and he doesn't know if Mankind's ready to face uh, Triple H at the Royal Rumble. And he just takes his shirt off and he's like, but I think you know a guy who does. Uh, and his name is Cactus Jack and just Triple H, the way he sells that. Like it's at the end of the day, it's just a dude taking his shirt off. Like <laughs> this, this could be really, really dumb. Uh, but the way Triple H sells it is absolutely incredible. Like he's in a ghost, like he's in the, the monster that he never wants to see or face in, the, in his life. Uh, and then the way his reaction to that then boils down to what happens in the match. Uh, and his incredible selling throughout that match is just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely love it. It's class, fair. class match. Yeah, I'll, I'll salute that one as well. That was a class match. And the final question of the day comes from John Harrison, who says, "Morning, boys. Phil, as you're going to WrestleMania, what's the one thing you really hope to happen?" Stroke C. And Gareth, as Phil was rubbing WrestleMania in your face last week, like the scampi is, what do you hope Phil doesn't get to see? I'll let you go first, Phil. Why not on this one? Yeah. Um, what's the one thing I hope to see? I, I don't know. I think like one of the low key things I'm more, most excited about at this WrestleMania for some reason is, uh, Sami Zayn and, uh, Johnny Knoxville doing something stupid. Okay. Yeah. So I just hope they do something absolutely spectacular and ridiculous and I get to be in a place to see it. Uh, but I also just really want to be there for Stone Cold glass breaking in Dallas and that crowd reaction. That's going to be one of the absolute highlights of the weekend. I'm very. I think that's, I think the, that's the moment I'm most jealous of. That's, that's going to be. Yeah, I've never seen Austin live crazy. ever. And um, yeah, this is like ooh, bucket list. Oh, this is good. Yeah, it's a good one. So I'm I'm going to take it more to the Raw after Mania because I understand you're going to be there as well. So you don't want uh, me to see Veer. That's it. I don't want Veer to come. I hope it don't come. I hope it's, I hope it's 2023. That's what I want. I want. I want these graphics <laughs> pop up and then they go. 2023 underneath it that's what i want okay i'm gonna <laughs> rob you of the via via is gonna stay clear of mania rob after mania there 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 it is god damn it why would you take this away from me it's been built for so long well i'm i'm gonna be i believe i'm gonna be doing the stream for night one in the in the what culture office of all places there you I'm go. Gonna be there. i think me and nice. mr murray are gonna be there so that'll be uh we'll be celebrating, banging the drum, cracking open a few cold ones, probably with some YPA. We'll be watching on as you guys are there live. And I hope Absolutely. Stone Cold doesn't come out. I hope he just sits back at home and just does a video call. There you go. Zooms in. <laughs> Fair enough. You mentioned the YPA. We should say we got a box of our beers yesterday. Uh, if you check out the What Culture WWE Twitter, it's, there's like a video of us tasting it for the first time on there. It's really good. I'm so, so happy. It's actually really nice because uh, we had, obviously, we'd not tasted it before. We had no idea what it was actually going to taste like. It's really, really, really good. I highly suggest you go get some. TopRopeBrewing.com. Good, good stuff. Yeah, you just have your... <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Uh... What time is it, Gareth? Come on. <laughs> Six o'clock somewhere. So. <laughs> uh, but that is today's wrestling news. Thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you follow us over on Twitter. You can follow me at Phil My Chambers and you can follow Gareth at GMorgan04. And you can follow all of us at What Culture WWE. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below what you think of all of today's stories and give us all your favorite Triple H moments as well. Let us know. We want to go through them and see. Uh, but most importantly, everybody, have yourselves a bloody good day. Bye.